Welcome back to Miniature Game Montage and my first tutorial on a question that I get asked pretty frequently, how I paint my Necromunda terrain and a lot of the grim dark scenery that I use in our battle reports. We're a little backed up at the moment with some stuff and it may take us another week uh, to get our next battle report out. Spoiler alert, uh, it will be our next installment of the Dark Uprising campaign for Necromunda. We have also updated our 40k crusade, so that is on the horizon as well. And there's a lot more coming down the pipe. Now, I'm not one to buy something and not paint it, so what's coming up is a big pile of shame for me, and it's really driving me nuts. One of the reasons we've been so behind recently is I've purchased a 3D printer. You're seeing some of that uh, terrain on the screen now. And I have to say, I had no idea what these things were capable of. I kept wanting more and more terrain because the variation of the terrain really makes for more interesting games. Um, on the screen, I'll show you some samples that I've printed and you can find them on Thingiverse. I'll put a link uh, in the description below. I'll also include one of the armor containers I found. Based on the plastic filament used, this might cost two to three dollars each US to make. And I'm really excited to share these and we plan on making more terrain in the future and sharing some of these techniques with you. So today we're going to get some terrain painted up and I'll show you my method for doing it. This will be easier for me because when people ask questions in the future, I can now just refer them to this video. Um, first off, I'm not an artist. I wouldn't consider myself an excellent painter. I, I don't really understand color theory and I don't own an airbrush nor know how to use one. There's a lot of really good tutorials out there that just quite frankly, I feel like get too complex for someone like me. I am a average Joe painter and you know, I just watch some things on YouTube, pick up things here and there and, and try to do a good job. I like to paint to a good standard and try not to be sloppy. Although when watching this video, you'll probably think otherwise. The Necromunda terrain from the Dark Uprising box is a daunting task. Just clipping and assembling it all takes a lot of time. I found a great tutorial on YouTube from Sledgehammer Studios. I'll put a link in the description, but I also find a lot of other guys that use a similar method for grimdark terrain, such as Wylux Armory and Eric's Hobby Workshop. I'm not sure who started doing it first, but it's fast, simple, and effective, and importantly for me, it's wash free. First, you're going to want to start with a black primer. Choose whatever primer you like to use. Just go for a matte black. And some of the colors you're going to use is a reddish brown type of color and a silver color. So a lot of people will use Mournfame Brown from the Games Workshop range. I'm using Vallejo model color Mahogany Brown and um, also Necron Compound. These are the only two colors that I'm using for this really basic paint scheme. And, you know, starting with that Mahogany Brown, um, as always, give it a quick shake. Um, there's really, there's no need to thin or anything. We're going to be doing a dry brush here. So just get a large brush in it. And then it can be a thicker dry brush because you're essentially giving this a light base coat. Um, so dab that off on your paper towel to where there's hardly any paint there. This can be, again, a little thicker. And then just start using circular motions going around the, uh, the piece and just kind of getting into some areas. And you want to be irregular. Um, in fact, the more irregular, the better. These pieces are supposed to be old and worn, so being very random with your brush strokes is a good thing. So we're just going to go around and around this model, you know, putting on this reddish brown. And uh, once that dries, we'll essentially be ready to go in with our uh, silver. All right, next we're going to move on to the Necron Compound, a much lighter dry brush this time. Do not have as much paint loaded up on your brush and just move around and really pick out the high spots uh, on the terrain. I like to focus pretty heavily on the pipes and anything that, you know, would, would really kind of stand out a little bit. But giving that a lighter dry brush with Necron Compound, you can immediately see the terrain really start to come to life. And that is basically it. It's these two colors going all around fast and easy. So next we're going to use a similar technique, but we're going to apply some accent colors. And I'm going to use this container that I printed out uh, to kind of show you the uh, method behind giving it some color variation and to have some things on the table that can give yourself some more color other than just that red, brown, and, and silver. So we're going to start um, the exact same way as we did the previous terrain. I'm going to go over this model, giving it a dry brush of mahogany brown from Vallejo. Again, you can use whatever reddish brown type of color that you want. Uh, just pick a big brush, go around the model, give it a quick dry brush. This should not take you longer than uh, a few minutes. 
Now this uh, particular container, I'm gonna go with a yellow. So I'm gonna bring in some Averland Sunset from Citadel range and just gonna load some of this up on the brush after giving it a shake. Gonna dab just a little bit off just so I can have a little more control with it. And then we are going to use the crappiest brush that you can possibly find uh, because you're gonna see why we're gonna stipple. And that just simply means that we're gonna be smashing the end of the brush into the model. So loading up that paint, getting a little bit off just so we can have a little better control. And then we are just gonna start stippling some of that accent color in. And we will do this uh, all across the model where we think that it should be necessary. So when doing this, I realized that this yellow maybe popped a little too much. It made the container look a little uh, too new. So we're gonna end, uh, end up uh, kind of dulling that down a little bit with some Agrax Earth Shade to give it a little bit more of a worn look, but uh, we'll cover that here in a future step. Okay, next we're gonna break out our Necron compound or whatever silver of your choice. And we're gonna get most of that off on our paper towel and go through and really focus on these high areas and, and places where you would you know see some metal and some worn and uh, just give that a dry brush all over. This is also a good way to kind of blend in some areas where you know maybe you spilled some yellow over. You could go over that with um, the silver or Necron compound and really just go through the model, giving that a dry brush, and uh, we'll come back in just a minute. And this is what the model looks like before applying the wash to the yellow areas. So being kind of liberal with the silver and just going through and really being irregular. So while the wash dries, we're going to go ahead and work on the building and we're going to use a similar technique to what we used earlier. I am going to use some different colors here for this. I'm just using some kind of gray. I had this German World War II field gray. That's what I'm going to start with because it seems to be one of the darker grays that I, I have in my collection. And I'm one of those guys where I just I use whatever I have. Um, so that's that's what I'm using. You could pick any kind of darker gray and just start with this base tone. Uh, but we're just going to get that loaded up on our brush, dab it off on a paper towel, and then begin the dry brush technique on uh, the building here. And I'm going to be focusing on just areas around the building where the actual building is exposed. So there's a lot of pieces on this that are covered up with some kind of metal. So I won't, I won't be looking at those areas, but more or less the, uh, the places that I'm hitting that, you know, there is no metal. So just going to go over, be irregular, randomly put this around the model, and then we will move on to a lighter gray. Okay, so you can kind of get a feel for what that looks like on the model. We are then going to move to a lighter gray. In this particular case, I had a green gray line around. It looked a little lighter than what I was using, so that's what I picked and uh, scoop that up and it's gonna be similar. We're gonna use a dry brush technique. Now this thing is gonna look really terrible until we get to the end and the colors kind of start to come together. So um, just kind of keep that in mind. And, and of course, keep in mind that I have no clue what I'm doing. <laughs> so uh, anyway, going through with a lighter dry brush right over those gray areas that we hit previously. Now I did do this out of order, but it really doesn't matter. Went to my mahogany brown or whatever red brown you choose, and I'm gonna go over some of these metal areas. So gonna load that on my brush, unload it onto the paper towel. Gonna be a little bit heavy on the dry brush and go through and just start picking out a lot of these metal areas. Now, as you can see, as I've worked my way around the model, getting these metal areas, the, the model is starting to pop a little bit more. So we're going to continue going around and then we are going to repeat the similar process that we did last time. We're going to bring on some silver or Necron compound and go around these metal spots again. And one thing to note about the silver that you're applying is you want to be sure that it is a lighter dry brush. I do screw up some in here and, and have too much loaded up on my brush when I go back in. Uh, it is uh, easy to fix, um, but again, you just try to be irregular. It's okay if you get too much. You just don't want to streak too much like I do. Sometimes I just don't even worry about it, um, but uh, other times I will go back and clean it up if it's, if it's pretty bad. But I'll work my way around the model again with a Necron compound, giving the uh, metal areas a good silver pop. All right, and then a step I forgot earlier, I do use three tones of gray. I've got this really cheap, light gray stuff, just a very cheap acrylic paint, you know, a dollar a 
pop or whatever. And I just go around and lightly dry brush that in on the grays just to bring out, you know, some lighter tones and some tonal variation. It also, it's, it's so light that it kind of blends in with the silver a little bit. So it can help you kind of cover up any areas that you might've uh, did too much or, or something like that to help blend it all together. But just really going around picking out the high points and the corners and, and kind of making those areas just pop out a little bit more. And then next we're going to work on some subtle details, maybe some graffiti just to kind of add to, you know, what it is and the area that it is. So, you know, just quickly grab some white and, you know, write in anything that, you know, you want to write. Um, go around the model. You can use whites, reds, orange, blue, any kind of colors that you feel like um, would be spray painted somewhere just for random graffiti. Next up, we're going to work on some subtle details like putting some paint to the buttons, just some red or whatever colors you want to make those. And here's a quick look of what we've got so far with the graffiti on there, as well as the buttons on the other side and the small things. So we're going to continue to add one more layer of detail by adding some posters. And I picked this up from Midwinter Minis and uh, his tutorials are fantastic. Um, but you can get a lot of these posters. If you just search the internet for Necromonda posters, you can print them out. They have a lot of different sizes and a lot of different uh, variations of these. And I think there's a lot of them posted on Yak Tribe, if I'm not mistaken. But a uh, really complex method of doing this here. You're simply going to cut them out, take some PVA, so just white regular Elmer's glue or whatever you have, just regular old PVA glue. Uh, I like to tear some of them just to give them a more, you know, normal kind of look and a more weathered look. And we're just going to put some PVA on the back and uh, stick these bad boys on, get them pressed down good and firm. And then we're going to weather them a little bit so they uh, maybe blend into to, uh, the terrain a little more. And after that dries, we are going to take some Agrax Earthshade or Brown Wash, and we're just going to go over these uh, posters to kind of weather them in a little bit, make them look a little dirtier. I'm also going to use the wash to hit the buttons to tone them down a little bit. And I'm also going to go over some of the graffiti pieces, especially any, any white graffiti I used. I'm just going to go over that with this brown wash as well, just to kind of fade that into the terrain a little more and uh, make it look not so new. And this is kind of what we are left with at the end. This maybe took 30 minutes, maybe, maybe not even that long. Um, but, uh, for me, a decent piece of terrain that is going to look great on the board. And I'm really excited about the quality of print that I was able to achieve with a budget entry level printer. I did get an Ender 3 V2, um, and this is the type of print quality that I'm getting just on basic settings. So I really hope this tutorial has helped you uh, think of a new way to paint your scenery in a very quick and easy, uh, method. Uh, it has certainly helped me with Dark Uprising box set being, uh, you know, so massive. Uh, but you can easily do something like this because I'm just the average person, um, and that obviously shows. But uh, you can take this as far as you want to. So this will at least get you started. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you'd like to see more of these, feel free to give me a, a thumbs up in the comments. Feel free to get engaged. Let us know what you like and what you don't like, and uh, there will be more coming in the future. Thanks so much for watching.